we're gonna be creating this disco ball loop and we're gonna create it in a super easy way, completely within geometry nodes. We're gonna go step by step, so let's begin step one. In our default scene, we'll go ahead and bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and then change this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, after which we'll zoom in, select the group input, and tap X to delete it. Next, we'll start off by creating the sphere for the disco ball, so we'll press Shift A and search for an icosphere. Now we can place the icosphere down here and take the mesh and plug it into the group output. We can start increasing the subdivisions to make it nice and smooth so something like 5 should be smooth enough and we can play around with the radius later on for now we'll keep it at the default of 1. Then if we actually zoom in we can still see these little triangles. Since we don't want to see that we can press shift A and search for a set shade smooth node and plug that in after the icosphere. Now of course we're going to have to select a material for the icosphere. So I'll press Shift A, search for a set material node and plug that in after the set shade smooth node. For the material, we can just choose the default material, then go to the material tab and change the name for the material to disco ball. Now we need to add in the rays. So I'll press Shift A and search for a joint geometry so that we can have both the icosphere as well as the rays and then start off with the rays. All the rays are going to originate from the origin and then move out in random directions. So we press Shift A and search for a points node so that we can just have a bunch of points present right at the center. So if we actually were to hide this, you can see we have a point present in the center from which we can instance these different light rays. Right now there's only one point, but we can increase that to something like 30 so that we have 30 different rays coming out from this single point. So to add in those different rays, we can press Shift A and search for an instance on points node and plug that in after the points. For the actual instance, we can press Shift A and search for a curve line and then plug the curve into the instance socket of the instance on points. Now every single curve is present at the exact same place pointed in the exact same direction. So to give it some randomness, we can press Shift A and search for a random value node and then simply change this from float to vector because we want random rotation on all three of the axes. The mins we can change to minus pi, which is actually minus 180 degrees or half of a circle in all three directions. And then for the max, we can change it to plus pi, which is essentially the other half of the sphere. Now we can take this value and plug it into the rotation. And there we have all of these rays pointed in random directions around the entire circle. We can increase the length of the rays by changing this Z value to whatever high value you want. We'll just keep it at something like 40 meters and that should be more than enough. Now, if you were to switch off overlays, you won't be able to see anything because right now these are just curves that are being instanced. We obviously need these curves to have some thickness. So we press Shift A and search for a curve to mesh node and then plug this right in after the instance on points. Now for the profile curve, we can search for another curve circle. So press Shift A and search for a curve circle. Now we can change this radius down to something like 0.025 and we don't need the resolution this high. So we'll reduce the resolution to something like 10 and then plug this curve into the profile curve. Now we just have these rays coming out from the center that can be seen even if we switch off the overlays. Just like last time, we have to give it its own material. So let's select this set material node from here, press Shift D and plug it in after the curve to mesh. For the actual material, we have to come to the material tab, press this plus button to add in a new material slot and press this new button to create a new material. We can name this material as rays and then in the set material node, we can go ahead and select rays from the drop down that appears. Now we can unhide this or unmute this icosphere node and now we have both of these. But we need these rays to start rotating in random directions. But to make that looping, it's actually a very simple process which will look pretty random although it's not really random. For that, we simply search for a rotate instances node, plug that in after this entire tree and then we play around with this rotation socket and mess around with the keyframes. We'll go ahead and set all of our animation defaults by going to our output properties and changing the frame rate to something like 60 frames per second. If we want this to be a 10 second long animation, we can change the end frame to 600 and then store the file wherever we want. I'll change the file format to FFmpeg video. And for the encoding, I'll change the container to MPEG4 and the output quality to perceptually lossless. Then I can expand my timeline by a little bit, press the back arrow to go to frame zero. And then for the rotation, I'll just tap I while hovering over it to add in a keyframe on frame zero. Then I'll change all the way to frame 600, which is my last frame. And there for both the X and the Y, I want to change the value to 360. So I'll press shift click and drag over the X and the Y so that I can change both the values together and I'll type 360 after which I'll tap I to add in another keyframe. Now if you were to play the animation you'll see you have random rotation but it starts off very slow and then starts speeding up as we come to the center and that's because this is currently set to the Bezier interpolation. I don't want it to be Bezier.
VA, I want it to be linear. So I can hover down here, tap A to select both the keyframes and then press T linear. And that way we should have a smooth loop. However, the frame rate is currently very low. As you can see, it's dropping down to 12. So to see a realistic speed at which this is going to be rendered, you can change the playback from play every frame to frame dropping. And now you'll be able to see how fast the rays are actually moving. If this is fast enough for you, good. If it's not, you can change the number of rotations that it does by making this different multiples of 360 instead of just one. With that on frame 600 and frame zero, you should see the exact same thing to make sure that it's a perfect loop. If you're happy with it, you can go ahead and add in a background on which there will be different reflections of these different rays. So I'll press shift A and just search for another icosphere. And this time I'll increase the radius to something really large. Let's go with maybe 25 meters and I'll change the subdivisions to something like five or six. Then I'll take this mesh and plug it into the joint geometry so that we have the outer icosphere as well. If we were to zoom out, this is what we'd see. But as long as we keep our camera within the icosphere, we get it as a nice background. So with that, you can place the camera by selecting the camera in the outliner, pressing Alt G to clear location and Alt R to clear rotation, and then pressing R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then you can press G Y and then just drag your mouse to bring it back. And once you have it fairly back, you can press zero to go into your camera view. After that, you can press G Y and continue moving it back, or you can go to your object data properties or your camera properties and change the focal length down to get a more wider field of view. Maybe I'll change this to 25 and I'll go to my viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one. With that, I just have this really nice disco ball animation and I can start texturing the different materials. Before that, for the background, I also need to set material. So let's press shift D on this set material node and then go to the material properties, add in a new material slot, press this plus button to create a new material, call this background and then choose background on this set material node. Then you can switch over to the shader editor and you can also change your viewport display to rendered so that you can see changes that you make. We don't need the default light. So let's select it and delete it. And we can also go to the world properties and change the background color all the way to black. Then with our default cube selected, we can start off by selecting rays and giving the ray material. So let's select the principal to be SDF and tap X to delete it. Then press shift A and search for an emission node and plug the emission into the surface of the material output. That way you should be able to see all the rays and you can start increasing the strength to something like 100 so that it's really nice and bright. But to see this even better, you can go to your render properties and switch on bloom and screen space reflections. Now the bloom is way too strong. So let's expand this and change the intensity from 0.5 to 0.02 and also clamp it down at something like five. Then we need to play around with the color and I want each of these cylinders to select its own color. So I'll press shift A and search for a color ramp so that we can give the choice of colors. And for the factor, we'll press shift A and search for an object info node. From the object info node, we can take this random socket and plug it into the factor of the color ramp and then take the color and plug it into the color of the emission. Then we can go ahead and press this plus button to add in a new stop and then change the colors for these stops. We'll change the black to maybe a bluish color like this. Then we'll take this middle socket and change it to a white color. So let's bring it all the way to the brightest white. And the last socket we can change to maybe a yellowish color by bringing the selection down over here. Then instead of making this linear, we can change this to constant so that it becomes either blue, white or yellow. But since the yellow is over there, we don't see any of the yellow. So let's bring this white in and start bringing the yellow in as well. So that way you can choose how many of them become blue, how many of them become white and how many of them become yellow. Once you're happy with the selection, you can go Go ahead and go back to the material properties and then select the disco ball material. For the disco ball material, you can increase the metallic all the way to one, maybe reduce the roughness down to 0.2 or 0.3 so that you get better reflections. And then to enhance the reflections even more, I'm going to actually select the base color. And instead of a value of 0.8 or one, I'm going to actually increase the value to something like 10. And that way we get really nice bright reflections. And I think that looks really good. Next, we can select the background material and simply increase the metallic value all the way to one. But I'll reduce the roughness to maybe 0.3 and I'll change the base color from a white to a slightly darker color just to contain the amount of reflections. Maybe I'll change the roughness to a value of 0.15 as well to get really nice reflections. And once you're happy with the brightness of the background color and everything like that, you can go ahead and set your color management by going to your render properties, going down to the color management and then changing the look according to what you think suits your scene. So I'll change the look to medium high contrast and then I'll go ahead and press render animation. That was actually all there is to create this particular animation. It's really simple yet 
Yet the outcome of animations like this can be seen all over stock footage websites. I hope this one helped you in getting some ideas or inspirations to create simple animations as well from time to time. If you liked it, there are many other simple animations as well as complex animations present on my channel and you can definitely look through them because I upload a video every single day and there must be videos waiting to be discovered by you. So until the next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching, keep creating and stay creative.